I'm live. So today I finished reading the Wordsworth classic, Robin Hood. So if you're like me, most people who have seen um, old 50s TV shows of Robin Hood and perhaps some of the movies with uh, Kevin Costner and some of the other people, you have the idea that this is more or less an adventure. It's really upbeat and fun, exciting. And that's what I expected. So I thought I'll get me a Robin Hood book. It's a Wordsworth classic. It's got to be important literature. And my first question is, was Robin Hood real? And there's some debate on this. And it's not told in the book, of course, if he's real or not. But some historians say it's a bunch of folk tales. And then some point to several possibilities of who Robin Hood was, where he was living and buried. Let's see. What's up, dude? Hope you're having a great day. Oh, you're in Florida? Oh, my gosh. Johan's in Florida, and he's getting hit by the hurricane. I've been watching the water go into Fort Myers, and I visited Fort Myers years ago with my wife and daughter, and it was a beautiful beach. We camped there, and it's now under, I think, eight or nine feet of water. So, yeah, I'm praying for you, Johan. Uh, Hopefully you're not close to the shore there. If you can get Midland to get away from it, get away. It's not good. So anyway, back to Robin Hood. So I figured, as with most um, important novels, that there's probably one Robin Hood book, and I'm incorrect. So this book is just called Robin Hood by Henry Gilbert, and I looked it up after the fact. This is also referred to as Robin Hood and the Men of the Greenwood. But it is written in 1912, and clearly the Robin Hood stories originate debatedly back to the 1600s and perhaps 1300s, even earlier than that. And they're not exactly sure um, when the individual stories were written. And I don't believe that they're, um, so they might be songs or they might just be like, limericks. I'm not sure what the original ones are, but as you're reading through this, each chapter is its own individual kind of mini story. I, lo I love Robin Hood. We're right up on the East Coast. Oh my God, along the direct path of the storm. I hope you're up at Tampa area because I think they're going to dodge it a little bit. Just hoping it won't be as bad as Category four, it's 150 mile an hour winds right now. Last time I looked, I've been watching Weather Channel. Sorry, I'm jumping back and forth for the people that see this after the fact, but today is September 28th and a potentially historic hurricane is hitting Florida. So uh, hoping, wishing well, praying for all the people over there. Okay, back to Robin Hood again. Um, so Henry Gilbert wrote this in 1912 and he didn't really write it per se. It's a collection of the stories that have existed or limericks or whatever they're called. And he has an introduction where he kind of tells you that didn't really sink in until after the fact that I wasn't reading a book per se, but more or less a collection. And it's not all of the Robin Hood stories. And apparently there's two eras. There's the early Robin Hood stories, which are more fleshed out. And detailed and then there's later era stories that this author says he left a lot of them out because of you know not being very detailed and i think he basically picked the ones he felt were most important but generally in in the theme of this if you're expecting adventure and fun there are some arrow shooting stories where you know, obviously the guy has prowess in shooting arrows and hitting things that other people can't hit. And that's perhaps where some of the more goofy stuff that's been on TV and movies comes from. The other thing, he kind of has a couple stories in there where you'd say he's a little bit mischievous, where he's punishing people in ways that are maybe a little bit laughable. But in reality, he's really not that good of a guy. He's pretty much a bad guy. He takes a lot of stuff away. You've heard the thing, give, robs from the rich and gives the poor. He doesn't really give anything to the poor. He just takes the money from the rich. He's got a, a bone to pick because the owners of the lords of the land are 
taking people's lands away. They're um, taking their resources. They're making them become serfs and pretty much just treating the people really, really awfully. And they basically said, we're going out here in the forest to get away from all this and leave their families behind. And we're going to do bad stuff to the rich people as long as we can get away with it. But it's very violent. Um, as you know, with most middle medieval books, it's pretty violent. If you're not into a lot of people dying in, uh, you know, pretty graphic and different ways, you probably won't enjoy it. You'll be thinking, what is this? This isn't fun. Um, the other thing about it is it's very sad. It's, uh, especially the end, what happens to him. I'm not going to go into detail because if you read it, you will never guess what would happen to Robin Hood. You probably think he got killed in battle or something like that. Not even close. You'll never figure it out. It's something more, uh, uh, almost along the lines of a horror film. Um, let's see. Johan says Robin Hood is a savage as the story goes. And that's how it should be. Yeah. I just didn't expect that going in. And uh, I could see people enjoying him being that kind of a character. I thought this was going to be a light, fun read. And it wasn't. It was pretty dark. They pretty much are avoiding the the punishment of the lords and they really don't have any choice they can either be totally beaten on and just taken advantage of to the max or they can basically go out on a death mission and say you know what i'm going to do bad stuff back to these guys and it's probably going to end up turning out really bad and it pretty much does so let's see if you think that book try the original pinocchio novel you know, I don't think I have that here. I've got the Grimm's Fairy Tales I might be reading soon. But I probably should read that too. Some of those old Disney stories, I know they're all creepy. And uh, they turn them into happy-go-lucky stuff for theme parks and movies. Um, yeah, I doubt that there's going to be any movie. Because a lot of times I like to compare books to films. I doubt that any of the films are um, very close to what this gives of a feel maybe kevin costner's did i don't know my wife i was telling her at the beginning a couple of these stories she said it sounds like kevin costner's movie but um cinderella is even darker with the most savage ending i've ever read i'm gonna have to dig into those that's that's interesting i like uh scary creepy stories so that would be cool and they're probably easy reading because they were i'm guessing originally intended for children but anyway, this, um, along with, I also am reading Three Musketeers, which is very long. And the author also wrote Don Quixote, which is super long. I finished that this year also. Um, the Three Musketeers starts off really slow. This was easy reading. I got through it real quick. It's 288 pages. I wiped this one out pretty fast. I'm over a hundred pages now in uh, Three Musketeers, but it's the pacing's nothing like this one was. It's just basically introducing you to the actual three guys. And it, it looks like there's even candidates for other musketeers in that group. And they're not so sure that it's going to be three. So this Three Musketeers also does not have a feel of adventure like you see on the 50s TV shows and stuff. So I have a feeling I'm in for another um, recap that's blown out of the water from what I expected. So anyway, this is one iteration of Robin Hood. I'm supposing you could probably go back and find all of the original whatever they're called, limericks or whatever, and uh, you'd get a different experience in this collection, I guess you could call it. But it is easy and quick. So if you're realistic and understanding that this is not a fun story, that it's pretty dark, then you might like it. So Johan says, I read the original It novel. I've read that also. And that book is like the Bible. It's very long. Yeah, I think that was, it was like 1,400, maybe not that long. I think 1,200 and something pages. I've read that in the past. And then this year I wrote Don Qu read Don Quixote. 
I read The Count of Monte Cristo, which was like 1,243 pages. And I read, what was the other one? Oh, shoot. I can't remember. It's not Les Miserables. I have Les Miserables up here. As far as classic literature goes, oh, this is Grimm's. I got the wrong one. That's a big book, too, but it's uh, here's Les Miserables. Have not started this yet. We'll probably do it next year, but you can see it's real big. It's bigger than those other ones. It's 1,468 pages. So um, let me put this thing back. I wish I could remember the three of them. Talk Don Quixote, Count of Monte Cristo, which was honestly too long. Good, a good book, but it could have been shortened. There's an abridged version. I think I made a video on that. And I don't remember what the other third book that was long I just read this year. Uh, makes me feel stupid when I can't remember stuff I just did. But um, yeah, it it is a very weird book. It involves this at the end of it, especially a very bizarre tale of this like extra dimension that involved a turtle. <laughs> no, that's long. That's what she said. Right. Um, but anyway, if you look in my past YouTube lives, you'll see what the third book I read this year that was long that I can't remember. It must not have uh, hit me as hard as the other two. Don Quixote was the best of all three of the long books. And this Robin Hood book is pretty good. I'd probably give it like a four out of five. So sorry for rambling on too long if I did, but that's my story and I'm sticking to it.